Okay, so today we're going to talk about graphing quadratics. We have uh, last night's homework you were supposed to do, which number is 579? Yep. Okay, so we're going to look at five first. So let's zoom in. There was a whole list of things that you had to find out about this. You had to A, find the vertex, tell if it's a max or min, tell if it's wide, narrow, regular, give the equation, plot, mirror the points, check with the graphing calculator, we'll do that later today. What was G? You also had to give Y intercept and um, up or down. All right, some of this, ladies and gentlemen, we can establish before we even do any math. You can tell just by looking at this. It's down. Yes. So because A is negative, A is a negative what in this case? Uh, it's one. just the number. So A is a negative 1. All right? So if it helps you to list A, B, and C over on the side, do so. So in this case, A is negative 1, B is negative 6, C is negative 8. Because A is negative 1, that tells us a few things about the graph. That tells us that it's going to be down like a frown. Is this going to be wide, narrow, or regular? Not too wide, but yeah. It's going to be normal. It's going to be regular because when we compare, when we say wide and narrow, we're saying it's more wide than if A were 1 or if it's more narrow than if A were 1. So in this case, the absolute value of A is 1, so it's just going to be a normal with U, okay? So down like a frown, normal with. Um, now, so we already have answers to H and C, right? Is that in agreement? Yeah. Okay. So now let's go back to A. We have to find the vertex. So to find the vertex, what is that formula we use? B, negative B. Negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. Now hold on, guys. That doesn't give you the entire vertex. That gives you half of it. That gets you the x coordinate right. So you're going to have to plug this in. You're going to have to find out this answer. And then you take that answer and you plug it back into the original. That's how you get the y coordinate. Okay? So let's go ahead. Negative b over 2a. In this case, what it would negative b be? Uh, would it be positive? Now it's positive 6 because b was negative and I want the opposite. Okay? And then 2 times a. Negative 1. So what do I really get for this? Negative three. Negative three. Please let me know if I'm writing and it's off the screen because then I'll be off the video too. All right. So this tells me my vertex is going to be at negative three comma something. We have to take negative three and plug it back into the original equation to see what that something is. So let's do that. Y equals. Now, let me just recopy what it looks like. You have to be careful when you are plugging in a negative. You have to be careful. We got to be paying attention. I'm plugging in a negative three. Remember what this means. This means I want to take whatever x is, square it, and then take the opposite. So this chunk right here, what should the sign of the answer be for this chunk, no matter what x is? It should always be negative, because this always means take x, square it, and then take its opposite. So when I go to plug in negative 3, the correct way to write it is like this. That negative stays, right? And then instead of x, I put in a negative 3 in parentheses, minus 6 times negative 3, and then a minus 8. I think some of you are having trouble on your graphs because if you don't plug this in and evaluate it correctly, the points aren't going to be where you expect them to be. So let's make sure that we are evaluating correctly. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. we got to start with the exponents. What is this right here? Nine, That's nine, nine, and that means yes. So I'm going to have a negative nine. This is going to be plus 18 and a minus 8. Okay? So now if I just evaluate that, that's going to be what? 1? Positive 1. Now I know my vertex is at negative 3, comma 1. All right? So there's your answer to part A. Now... As soon as you have your vertex, guys, you automatically have your equation for the axis of symmetry. That's part D. What is the equation for the axis of symmetry? X. Yeah. Minus five. Woo. X equals. Three X five. equals. That's a negative three. <coughs> yeah, I'll make that a little bit more clear. Guys, please listen. It's always X equals this number. It's always x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. Why is that? 
because the axis of symmetry is always a vertical line that runs right through your vertex. We've learned that the equation of any vertical line is just x equals some number. <sighs> so make sure that you understand that your axis of symmetry is just x equals that number because it's a vertical line through your vertex, all right? We also have enough to answer part B. Part B asks you if your vertex is a max or a min. How do you tell? It's, if it's up, then it's a min. If it's down, it's a max. Perfect. And what's ours in number five? Max. Max. Because my original equation is down like a frown, so that means this vertex is going to be the maximum, the highest point this parabola ever reaches. So every single point that I go to graph after the vertex should be below the vertex in this case. <coughs> Okay, so your answer to part B is that it is a maximum point. I'm kind of going out of order in how you answer them, but, oh, thanks. <coughs> um, no one said you had to go in order. I just need you to be able to find all of these things. All right, we got it. So now I think we're ready to start graphing. So we're, we're going to start with our vertex at negative 3, 1. So there it is on our graph. And then we talked yesterday about drawing the axis of symmetry through your vertex right now. It's not part of the final graph, but it's, you know, I find it helpful to have it on there. Because remember, it's a buy one, get one free sale. Use this to your advantage. You don't have to do twice the work. Yeah. No, no, I don't need to see it. It's not part of your final graph. So if you leave it off, fine. If you want it there, just make sure you put it as a dotted line because um, it is not part of your parabola. It's just there to help us kind of frame things out. Okay? So now you have to graph this. Guys, how do you know what points to plug in? Well, it's kind of up to you. I, this is what I personally do. I look at the vertex, and then I'm going to go one unit to the right or to the left. I'm going to get the same answer out no matter which way I go. So I pick the number that I would rather plug in. Would you rather plug in negative 4 or negative 2? Well, I'd probably go negative 2 just to keep your number smaller, right? That's your opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, either way, if I plug in negative 2 or I plug in negative 4, I should get out the same answer. So it really doesn't matter. It's your preference. I would personally plug in negative 2. So I'm just going to make myself a table. And please take a look here because I think those of you that were trying this and you were having some trouble, this is where the trouble was happening because I don't think we're plugging them in quite right. So if I want to plug in a negative 2, make sure you do it properly. Watch how this looks. Put the negative 2 in parentheses, minus 6 times negative 2, minus 8. That's how I plug it in like you're supposed to. Now we have to evaluate correctly, right? So exponents first. What is negative 2 squared? It's a, it's a classic negative Woo, four. careful. Oh, no, I was at, I was at, yeah, okay. okay, that's a positive 4. Negative 2 squared in parentheses like this is negative 2 times negative 2. This really is positive 4. But this sign out front means now take its negative. So now you have a negative 4. Negative 6 times negative 2, a plus 12 minus 8. Now, don't mess up on this arithmetic here, right? Be careful. So in this case, that's 8 minus 8. I get out. Zero. zero. So that's a point on my parabola. Negative 2 comma 0. But remember, it's a buy one, get one free sale. Negative 2 comma 0 is right here, but then what do you do? You mirror it right over to the other side. Don't now go ahead and plug in negative 4 and do all this work. Why would you double the work that you have to do? You already know the answer you're going to get out. It should be 0. All right? Riley says, hey, now plug in negative 1. Good idea, because now your choices are either plug in negative 1 or negative 5. I'd rather deal with negative 1. It's much easier. All right, so now let's plug in a negative 1. Again, be careful with these negative signs, guys. We have to plug it in carefully and then evaluate the right way. Whenever you're plugging in a negative, put it in parentheses. It's not, never going to hurt anything. All right, so this chunk right here is really what? The whole 
That's a positive one. one. This right here is a positive one. Now take the opposite. That's a negative one. Negative six times negative one plus six minus eight. Be careful. All right. Negative one plus six is five. Five minus eight is yeah, negative three. So let's go ahead and plot negative one, negative three. Negative one, negative three. By the way, are these points where, oh, well, I bought one. Let's get one free over here. Are these points looking like they're in places where they're supposed to be? Yeah. yeah. Remember, we already established that my vertex in this case was a maximum point. If at any time I got something that was higher than this, you automatically know that that's wrong. That can't be right. This is supposed to be a maximum point. That means it's the highest this graph will ever get. So luckily, my points seem to be falling in line. Is it uh, what it, I expected it to look like? Is it down like a frown? Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. It's not particularly wide or narrow. If you compare this graph, oh, geez, hold on one second. If you compare this graph to your graph for number three, which one's going to be wider? That one. Which one? Uh, Good morning, Ms. Sabia. I don't know. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Three would be wider. Yeah. Uh, he's been pretty regular. Yeah, he's a regular offender. I usually let him go, but I'm like, you know, enough is enough already. So. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that was my general impression too. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. All right. Sorry guys. So this is everything we ever thought it would be. We're going to connect everything with a nice smooth curve. Remember, guys, I know that you're going to be tempted to um, make this pointy, but, but you wrong. don't. Right. Because if you have a sharp corner there, that's usually our graphs for absolute values. OK? So there is number five done out completely. Everything. Did we answer everything? Oh, wait. There was something that we're missing. What? Um, G. I know, but we didn't do G. The y-intercept. Now, I don't. I can't see the y-intercept on here. I know it's going to be somewhere down here, but how do I find it? Exactly. Guys, at the y-intercept, x is always going to be 0. So when you have to find the y-intercept, all you do is plug in 0 for x. What would you get out for y? Oh, it would, that makes perfect sense. Negative 8. So your answer to part G, the y-intercept, guys, always give it as an order pair, would just be 0, negative 8. Isn't the y-intercept always that last number? Yeah. As long as that last number doesn't have a, a, an x on it. So it's always the value of C because A and B are going to get canceled out. Just make sure that you give the answer as an ordered pair, 0, negative 8. Yep. What if C has an x? Then it's not C. Then it would be B. So what would C be there? Like, let's say, like number four. It would be zero. So you'd have x equals zero in that case. All right? Okay, so there's number five. Refer back to this if you need to.